Hey guys, got this Roku Premiere Plus here. I use it for a uh, streaming uh, video from my NAS or from the internet, you know, Netflix or Plex or YouTube or whatever other uh, online or offline digital media uh, provider you use. And uh, I was looking at this and I thought, I wonder what's inside. So um, the little voice inside my head that tells me that things are a bad idea didn't speak up. So let's pull it apart and see if we can't break it. So on the outside, we've got a Ethernet port there. It also has Wi-Fi. So you can use the Ethernet port or Wi-Fi. I use the Ethernet port because I've got a uh, an outlet just behind my home theater. Uh, HDMI out. And this one apparently does up to 4K. Uh, my projector is only 1080p. It's just some Sony or something. But um, yeah, 1080p is fine for me. It's uh, got the SD card or micro SD card so you can expand the uh, the storage space for more channels and more stuff. It, apparently that SD card doesn't store any sort of uh, media, like you can't store movies on that SD card. Uh, but it will store like channels so that when you choose that channel it, it chooses a lot faster rather than having to communicate with the internet. Um, it has a certain amount of internal storage but if you fill that up with 500 channels or whatever it is, I don't know how many it can store. but you can add more through that SD card. And then of course the uh, power there. And then on the front, there is a, uh, it, it supports infrared. Uh, the remote is a RF remote, so it, you don't have to point at the unit. This can be hidden away behind the TV somewhere, which is uh, it, which is nice. And um, it has Wi-Fi as well, um, like I said before. So the remote can be a Wi-Fi remote, RF or infrared. So it covers all the bases and it works quite well. So without Waffling on too much more, let's uh, pull it apart, see what we got inside this thing. So I got the thing open, it came apart pretty easy. Basically, it's got to uh, pull the rubber base off, that'll expose four screws under the screws, and then uh, the top is kind of loosely, well, not loosely, but uh, not so tightly clipped in. So just use a plastic razor blade thing. You get these with the uh, like phone parts to pop the screen out, but I just use that around the edge. Pop that open and it came apart. So, first of all, we've got this uh, big aluminium heat sink. That's using a sill pad down onto the uh, the can here. Underneath there will be our CPU and then some RAM as well in there. It looks like they've got this kind of pretty chunky. That would be for two reasons: one, as the heat sink, and two, to add a bit of weight to the unit because otherwise it's going to be pretty light. It's just one PCB in a plastic box. So, to give the illusion of quality and the like something weighty and substantial, they put a bit of metal in there. Also got a piece at the bottom as well, doing the same sort of job. Maybe a bit of shielding, but that's not really earth to anything, so it's just going to be basically just a bit of weight. I've seen it done a few times before when you have something small and lightweight, they'll do this and then it feels like weighty and expensive. So that's pretty much the case. And here we have the PCB, so let's zoom in a little bit and uh, see what we can find. So here's the PCB close up. Here's the can that I was talking about before with the CPU would be under here. That's generating all the heat. So they're gonna have some, uh, like probably another seal pad under there or some sort of heat sink paste to get the heat through up into that uh, that heat sink. Then there'll be uh, some RAM chips over here. Uh, this one here is a flash memory. This is what's holding the operating system and the settings and everything. And uh, under this can is uh, where the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth or RF or whatever this thing's using will be in here. See the two antennas, Wi-Fi antennas, and uh, they'll probably be doubling up as uh, RF antennas because the remote control is RF that comes with this. But you can see this little piece here, that's actually an infrared receiver. So you can use an infrared remote or an RF remote. And I believe it can also use a, uh, a Wi-Fi remote. So you can remote control this through the, the Wi-Fi, like from your mobile phone or whatever. Uh, over here we've got something unpopulated, looks like some sort of plug, maybe a audio out, maybe, like a Toslink or something, I'm not sure. Uh, it's hard to see what that is, but over here looks like we've got an unpopulated USB header. They probably put a USB port in there, there's some bits and pieces that aren't populated, but that might be what that's for there. Uh, status LED here, yeah, the on LED and whatnot. Uh, this one here looks like a, a power supply, we've got three inductors. A chip there so that's going to be probably doing a couple of voltages for the Wi-Fi and maybe the CPU as well we've got another little power supply section here because this is the input jack so this is going to be doing probably the main regulation then that splits off up here and then gives the final voltages out uh, HDMI here and then we got the uh, LAN port with the magnetics 
that's just a standard, I believe it's 100 maybe gigabit, I can't remember exactly, but that's feeding straight into the CPU, that's going to be like a, a system on chip or something, doing the whole lot, because the, uh, the HMI here also feeds straight in, so there's no interface chips between the uh, HMI and the Ethernet and that uh, CPU. So if we flip it over, not much more going on on the underside. We've got the reset switch, some decoupling stuff for what's on the other side. Looks like we've got a, a test header there and uh, some two test points. They actually line up with these two holes and this hole here. So that will be during production. They put the case together, it's all in there, and they'll have like a bed of nails that pokes up through that hole. And uh, the contacts here, that may be where they power it, and this is where they test it, possibly. So that, that'll just do a diagnostics and maybe a, a firmware flash and something. And then we've got a uh, micro SD card slot here for expanding the memory, or the storage at least. So let's open this up. It looks like this can here, and this can here can be removed. I can't remove this one because it's soldered down, but that's just going to be a a Wi-Fi chip, but we'll have a look inside and see what's in these cans. So I managed to get some of the cans off. This one I couldn't because it's soldered down. Uh, that's going to be our Wi-Fi RF sort of chip, chip set or whatever inside there. Unfortunately we can't have a look because I don't want to desolder and ruin the, the PCB. But this one here, this is our main processor and RAM. So we've got an ARM processor here. It's an MSO9380AHZ. Now, I couldn't find any information on that. Um, it's probably a custom part number. ARM um, tend to do that. They've got a billion different variants and uh, all sorts of different bits and pieces. So, uh, according to the uh, the manufacturer of the Roku, uh, this is an ARM Cortex A53, a quad core at 1.2 gigahertz. Now, these two chips are the RAM. Uh, these are two uh, Samsung chips, and they're um, one gigabyte in total. Uh, there are K4, B4, G16 blah 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 so yeah they're just two RAM chips there feeding directly into the ARM the ARM processor and this one out here this is our storage like our flash storage it's a Toshiba chip and it's a 4 gigabit NAND EEPROM or E squared PROM uh, just a flash memory there but if we flip it over under this can there wasn't really much at all uh, just it's just the shielding on the back of the the board to stop radiation in both directions because uh, it's no good if you uh, shield the top but not the bottom, still going to get the radiation coming out, the uh, electrical interference, but uh, it's just all decoupling caps and support, you know, bits and pieces for the uh, RAM and the and the CPU. So that's what you're going to find inside a Roku Premiere Plus. It's just a little ARM computer, not much more than that, all the magic really happens in the software. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, don't forget we got the Patreon, keep watching the videos, and we'll see you next time.